Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today. How are you? Very good, thank you. Bright and early for the first, first meeting. Bright and early for the first one, yes. <laughs> Hope you've had a coffee. <laughs> um, so the bad guys, you know, for people who don't know anything about this new animation, can you give them a bit of a taste? What can they expect? Um, well, this is this is a this is a you know a, a super fun ride. Uh, story of these five animals that are, you know, kind of outcasts. You know, scary animals that decide to one day kind of turn good. Even though for them at, at first it's uh, it's uh, it's about cunning everybody. You know, these guys are master thieves. It's about cutting everybody, pretending they're gonna go good. But it turns out our main character, the big bad wolf, actually is, is is feeling the thrill to actually become a good guy. So yeah, it's kind of a the idea is to make kind of a little bit of a Tarantino movie for children. Um, and uh, it has the flavors of an Ocean Eleven. It's a heist movie. It's you know, fun adventure, fun fun car chases, fun action sequences, and tons of tons of great character moments. And yeah, I was reading. Um... Uh, an interview with the Australian author behind the graphic novels and he was saying yeah. just that that he was so fed up of these you know unforgivably boring books that his kid was bringing home and thought well I love Tarantino films how can I bring some of that without yeah. you know perhaps going to quite so many dark places so what was the appeal for you and, and what kind of made you think that it was going to work so well um on screen it's obviously your, your debut feature as well so it is yeah 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 um well, there's a few things that really, you know, the, the, the first thing is that, um, um, you know, I grew up with animation, you know, and, uh, and worked in animation for a long, long time. So uh, I kind of had a sense of what I wanted to see, like kind of like Aaron in a way, you know, I wanted to, to uh, that, that's something I, I'd been wanting or craving to see for a while. And then when that showed up, when, when uh, I saw the first, you know, his book, the first book, uh, which, um, you know, has that cover of these animals in suits. Uh, I was like, I know exactly what to do with this. And so it, it was literally, you know, kind of a, you know, what he's describing that idea of, of uh, Reservoir Dogs slash Pulp Fiction slash Bruce Brothers, but with animals in animation. So for me, it totally clicked and it also matched my sens sensibility, you know, sensitivity in what I grew up with and, and what I wanted to see. So I think it, it was kind of a little bit of a lightning in a bottle kind of moment. Um, and, uh, and it made it made complete sense for me. And then after that was okay. I also want to see something slightly different, you know, on screen in terms of visuals. You know, how can how can we, you know, move like change a little bit the, the look of a film like this, uh, a big CG feature, uh, and make it you know look a little different and uh, refresh refresh what we usually see, you know. And so all of that together kind of gave what we have now. But um, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, it's really that 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 very first cover that just struck struck a chord with me, you know. Very yeah. very remember that moment very really vividly. I was like, "This is brilliant!" And and on top of that, there's such a big idea behind it, you know. Um, yeah, it, it totally clicked. And yeah, and in terms of kind of um, developing it from from the novels, like you say, there does seem like there's something quite fresh about the look of the animation. Kind of maybe more of that sort of old school cartoony look. You know, along with the CGI, which can tend to, you know, normally look like almost two sort of clean lines. Yes. Um, and maybe, it's, you know, I, I think I was reading, you know, some influence kind of like from French cartoons and, you know, like different kinds of graphic novels. And then, of course, you've also had Eaton Cohen, um, you know, who's behind Tropic Thunder and Madagascar 2, Idiocracy, coming on doing the script. So you did kind of there was a process of, of taking it from from the novels to the screen and bringing something um different to it as well absolutely yeah 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 well when i when i started uh, he had already done a draft you know of uh of a first, i mean the first draft of the script um and what i loved about it was that <clears throat> he was able able to expand on the books you know and really use the kind of the iconic moments of the of the books without just having to follow the story of the books themselves too closely which was a creative license that aaron had gave, given us anyway um and 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 his first pass of the script was so so clean so so clean and so so precise in terms of the character description and the kind of humor that he wanted to uh, to have in his in in his story uh, and uh, for me, so made me laugh obviously you know and then wolf wolf character breaking the fourth wall and talking to the audience was like it's just so great you know and then we started we had to tweak a few things on the plot and add a stronger character arc but. 
but he had captured the tone of the books uh, in his in his script. And then for me, it was really, you know, just bringing that whole heist element, the Ocean Eleven and everything. Um, and you're right, it's, it's, it hadn't been done before in animation really to that scale at least, you know, and it's, for me, it was like, how can I, you know, expose the children and the, and the families, you know, younger younger audiences to uh, those movies that I love, you know, and, and I kind of, a, uh, you know, let, 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 let me give them a taste of that, what those films are, because they're so fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of the look, yeah, I mean, you wanted to get something again, like you're right, it has a bit of that old school vibe, but it's more like nostalgia in a way, you know, but like, and dusting it off. Um, but computer graphic animation can be so clean, so precise and so cold. Um, and I wanted something a bit warmer, a bit more greedy, a bit more like lived in, you know, and, and on top of that, also more illustrative. So we had, uh, we had an image that you really could focus your eye to the right place and, and not lose you in details, you know, and have that appeal of, you know, more traditional animation kind of uh, look. Um, and so we decided to start blending like painterly, painterly textures and, and line work and, and 2D effects, 2D, anima 2D effects, 2D lines. Um, and, and all of this gives you a kind of a, it's not completely 2D, doesn't look completely traditional, but it's not also the classic CG movies look that you would feel. It's kind of a nice in between nice balance, you know, that doesn't lose the audience, but at the same time makes it feel like it's different. Mm. And, you know, we have to mention the cast because you've put together such an amazing group yeah. of people and, and all very funny kind of, you know, comedians in their own right, like Mark Moran, I just like totally love the series Glow. And I know he does loads of his own stuff, Aquafina, yes. Sam Rockwell, um, Craig Robinson, Anthony Ramos. So how did you put all these people together and how did you work with them to kind of create, you know, the, the, the spirit really comes through and the tone really comes through. So, you know, how did you work with them to achieve your vision? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, the, the first thing was like from the beginning, the, the, the motto that we had was let's, let's not do, you know, let's not do the mainstream. Thing. Let, let's not do every, like, let's do something different. Let's try just to kind of take the, uh, get out of the beaten path kind of thing. And so, whether it's music and the way we score it, whether it's the visuals, whether it's the kind of story we're telling, you know, let's let's try and be um, whatever is like the regular path. We're gonna do something different, a little bit different, you know. Um, and and it was the same reasoning with the cast. You know, we could have used the usual suspects for a heist movie. You know, the Julia Roberts and the George Clooney, and, which by the way are amazing and just love them. But I think we wanted something that was. Uh, a bit more edgy, uh, a little less famous, known, a little more, uh, a little more cool in a way, you know. Uh, and so we started with, uh, I mean, Chrissy Sopper, our you know casting director, was just like spot on helping us through that, you know. Um, the idea was to find up and coming talents, um, and at the same time, very established ones. Um, and Sam was the first kind of our entryway, you know, because we. When, when we when we decided to go with him, it was like a no-brainer, you know, really quickly. It was uh, wow, he's exactly what we want. He has a charm of a cutie, but that that kind of a that that uh, he's a bit of a goofball at the same time, and he's so charming, and and he can be really raw. Um, so he was, and it's just a brilliant actor, you know, incredible. And so we casted him first, which gave the the movie such a a stamp, you know, a license of wow, this is this is something different. And therefore, approaching all the rest of the cast was. They were like, oh, Sam's in it, and the movie looks cool. Yeah, we're in. Um, and therefore, you know, they started to actually connect because we tried to record them together, you know, and not too separately because I wanted that kind of a feeling of, a, again, if you think Tarantino, all those scenes are so specifically crafted and dialogue is so important. So the idea was to actually try and record the actors together as much as possible, you know, uh, which is not easy in animation, but actually COVID helped us. And so we ended up being able to record two or three actors together. And we start, started to actually get them to know each other better. Uh, and in the end, they, they are such a great bunch of, of friends, you know, that love to just hang out and, 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 and be able to, uh, to riff off of each other and just, just give you that flavor that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and Richard is obviously here, Richard are you at in? And Richard is just uh, incredible, man. Like so, 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 so specific in what he does. And it's, it, it feels easy, it's not, clearly not, but, Every time he does something, I know the rest of the cast just crack up. I mean, they love him so much, and 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 he brought that voice to uh, to Marmalade in such a beautiful way. You know, um, 
he without you know with such such charm and such ease um I mean, all of them are like this, but but he's a standout. I mean, they, like it's it, it, they're so specific. Each of them are so specific, you know. And I think that's what makes this guy so vivid, you know. And you want to hang out with these characters because they have their unique voices, but very specific, which I'm so proud of. I'm out of time, but just unbelievably quickly, you know, what do you think people take away? Because it is kind of you know the fast-paced caper heist film. But it's also saying something about people who are labeled as bad guys, as the yeah. villain, as outcasts. And there's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy about that. And, and we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Yes. Yes, it's exactly right. It's a movie about how, you know, how we can be judgmental, but that we, we, we need to be, uh, we need to be able to just uh, give people a second chance and not, not, not always just rush to conclusions, you know? Um, you know, it's not because you're bad that you have to be bad your whole life. You know, there's, there's redemption, you know? Um, so definitely, you know, it's about stereotyping way too quickly and we, we tend to do that a bit too easily nowadays you know are you doing another animation next or a different film yeah of course yeah you know and uh, hopefully it could be uh it could be a second one of this film you know i kind of want to hang out with these characters a bit longer you know definitely i'm out of time but it's so great to speak to you thank you so much thank for sharing that with us can't wait for everyone else to see the bad guys of course Thanks. thank you have a good day thanks yeah bye <laughs>